It starts with a lightning storm. Here it is, 1947, the first week in July. A huge lightning storm takes down a so-called flying disc on a rancher's property outside Roswell, New Mexico. And the man who finds it, his name is W.W. Mac Brazel. He's a former really successful cowboy. And he takes this wreckage to the sheriff, who in turn takes the wreckage to the Roswell Army Airfield. And at the time, the 509th Bomb Group that is stationed at the Roswell Army Airfield is the only bomber unit that is actually equipped to carry nuclear weapons. And the military intelligence sends one of its officers to a local news station in Roswell with alarming news. And so this press release has legs and it picks up a lot of attention and people are very interested in this. And then, three hours later, the military intelligence from the Roswell Army Airfield sends that same officer back to the news station to say, oops, it actually wasn't a flying disc, it was a balloon. That idea, the idea of, oh, people, nothing happened, move along, go back to your business, it wasn't a flying disc, it was simply a weather balloon, that idea actually took hold, and people forgot about Roswell, New Mexico, for 31 years. And that all changed in the early 80s, after a ufologist named Stan Friedman, who is also a nuclear physicist, began to interview eyewitnesses who had been privy to this event back in 1947 who told these researchers, these UFO researchers, that they had kept their mouth shut because they'd been threatened by the government. And so in the early 1980s, when this came out in the form of a book, the Roswell story became front and center for many people. And about that same time, um, a man emerged from Area 51 claiming to have seen a flying saucer there and maybe a small alien being. And this became the link between Roswell, New Mexico and Area 51. So I was the first journalist that had 74 men who had worked at Area 51 go on the record with me about what it was like at this secret military facility. One of my sources, who was a nuclear weapons engineer, whose credentials were impeccable to me, who had been with the Atomic Energy Commission for several decades, including work on the Manhattan Project, tells me the flying disc that landed at Roswell had not been sent from outer space, but had in fact been sent by Stalin. He wanted to have as a warning shot over Truman's bow. Do I know what my source told me is true? I don't know that any amount of information that comes out will satisfy all the different so-called horses in the race because people now have their own ideas about Roswell and what it means to them and they don't necessarily want to let go of that. I mean, this is part of American culture. It is something that means a lot to a lot of people, and it means very different things to millions of people.